Good morning, Calvary. Happy Monday to you. Hope that you're having a great day wherever you're watching from and whatever time of the day you are joining us. And uh, today we're taking a little break from the Psalms. We've been looking at the Psalms since the beginning of this calendar year. And for the next two weeks, we're going to take a little break from that because we're going to be looking at some things as we lead into Easter because Easter is nearly upon us. We're two weeks away uh, from celebrating Easter. And I hope that you're going to join us either in person if you're in Lake Havasu or Parker or on Online, uh, if you are away from us, I hope that you're going to be celebrating Easter and in, in inviting others to join you wherever you're watching from. But as we do that, we're going to take some time uh, and look at some passages that help us prepare for that time of celebrating Easter and really frame our hearts and our minds on what it is that we're celebrating and why it's important. And uh, today we're going to go, uh, we're actually going to stay in the Old Testament. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Uh, and as we do this, we're going to be looking at a prophecy. Uh, a prophetic passage that, that comes uh, and that tells of the coming Messiah and explains how Jesus would behave. Now, something that's really powerful about this, though, uh, is, is that prophecies like what we're going to see in Isaiah help us understand how Christianity sets apart from other religions. Uh, and, and one of those ways, there's many ways that we see, hey, the, uh, Christianity is the, is the one true religion, and some of these others are just man-made religions that don't lead us anywhere. But one of those is the, the, the numerous uh, prophecies that explained exactly how Jesus would come, how he would live, what would happen with his life and death and resurrection, uh, and many of these hundreds of years before he was even born. Uh, so let's take a look, Isaiah 53, and let's just reflect on what it tells tells us about Jesus' life and what he would do. So Isaiah 53, starting in verse 2, it says this. It says, For he grew up like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and a sheep that before it shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. It continues on, but I want us to just pause and, and to think about some of the statements that, that are made there. Especially as it, it talks about the, the moment of our sins being laid on him. It says he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. And as we read this today in the year 2023, it's, it's so easy to see this and go, yes, we, we can correlate this with the, the understanding we have of what happened with Jesus in those final hours of his life as he was beaten, as he was, uh, as he was wounded, as he went to the cross and hung there to take the punishment for our sins. As, we, as I read those words of pierce for our transgressions, I think of the passage where it says that the Roman soldier struck him in his side with a spear to, to verify that he was deceased. He was pierced. He died for us. But I think it's easy to see that and forget that this passage came 700 years or more before Jesus was born. Uh, the book of Isaiah is written somewhere between 740 B.C. and 701 B.C. So somewhere between 700 and 740 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a manger, we're told what he would do for us on the cross. And, and with this, I want us to remember that, that the, the decision for Jesus to sacrifice on our behalf wasn't a, a quick and sudden decision. It wasn't just, uh, a, hey, I think this is a good idea today. But it was planned for us for thousands of years. Even before the book of Isaiah was written, we see uh, the very beginning of time in Genesis chapter 3, as soon as sin entered the world with Adam and Eve, Genesis 3.15 brings the first message of a coming Messiah. The, that first glimpse of the gospel comes in the book of Genesis. So all along, God has been planning for you and I to receive his grace through his son Jesus. Jesus knew exactly what was required and asked of him when he came to earth. It wasn't a surprise for him. It wasn't a memo that he received from his Father in heaven. Now this is the plan. No, he knew all along. 
which is why we see the, the struggle that he has in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross, praying uh, that if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. God, if there's any other way, let it be so. But yet he prayed, not my will, but your will be done. So today, know that God loves you, that the plan of salvation has been in place from the beginning of time so that you and I might have a relationship with our Father and that we might experience grace because he was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. And by his wounds, we've been healed. So today, I pray that you find hope and encouragement in the fact that God has been planning for a long time for you and I to receive his grace. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.